Hey everybody, I'm here to bring you Lance McCullers Pitch Grips. Lance was awesome enough to talk to me for about an hour and 45 minutes yesterday. And a lot of the conversation centered around his pitch grips, including his four seamer, his two seamer, his new cutter, his wicked changeup, and of course his knuckle curve. Not only that, several variations of his knuckle curve. But before we get into it, if you could do me a favor and subscribe to my channel, um, I plan to bring you a bunch of cool content during the season, and the season is about to kick off. So subscribe, and without further ado, here is Lance McCullers. So my four seam is 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 pretty is pretty comfortable for me. I throw with the logo on the inside because I keep my fingers pretty much together, and I have a slightly my hand tends to float a little bit this way. Um, when I, when I throw, I throw a lot of sinkers, throw a lot of change ups and then the curveball just stays, you know, it's just neutral. So it doesn't really matter with my four seam, my, my hand should be kind of more here. It tends to leak a little bit this way. So I hold it on the, uh, the logo on the inside and I kind of offset it just a teeny bit. Um, and it kind of helps me cue my middle finger to stay up on top of that ball. Um, and you know, it just, it obviously just comes off. It just comes off pretty normal. So my four seam is pretty standard. I just throw it logo in. It also allows me not to have my thumb on a seam, which is comfortable for me. I have a little space here. Um, when I flip the ball around the other way, my thumb is sitting directly on a, on a seam and it feels weird. So I just flip it around, offset it a teeny bit, and my thumb is clear. You can see clear of that seam. And so I feel like I have a good kind of grip on this ball and one that I can um, recreate. And my four seam is going to be better this year. I've been working on it and it's going to be better. So anyway, on to my two seam. My two seam is pretty standard. I don't have a crazy grip, but one thing that I have realized is I have to have a little bit of space here with my grip. I have to be more finger dominant on my two seam rather than having it kind of deep and having kind of like this, this middle part of my hand engaged. When that happens, it's flat doesn't have much run. I'll cut it a lot sometimes. So my two seam grip is pretty standard. Um, I used to hold it kind of cross-eyed like a lot of guys will hold it, but I kind of just hold it straight down the middle. I kind of keep these fingers really close together and um, I keep this separation here in my grip. That for me, having this thumb kind of tucked here and, and, and these two together, um, when, when I'm releasing this ball, it's super finger heavy and because of the way my fingers kind of work and, and, and flow here, my middle finger is coming off this ball last. So if it's too much in my hand, I felt like it was, it just wasn't getting, and I wasn't getting enough finger action here. So when I separated it and that one video I sent to you a while back, I mentioned this, having this little um, hole there or a space, I really get, I really get good finish pronation here um, on my middle finger off that off that off this horseshoe seam, and I really get that that good fade. Uh, I've had to survive with my sinker. Um, a lot of guys don't have to, you know. So I can get I can get it more down. I can get it running more side to side. I can even kind of upshoot it where I'm really kind of laying back on the fingers here, and I'm almost releasing the ball in this angle. I'm almost kind of releasing the ball here like like going up versus really staying on top of it and it going kind of like in a down sinking trajectory. Um, I found that more side to side plays uh, to the righties better than straight sink. I feel like they can just drop the hand, drop the head on it. Um, for lefties, the only sinker to lefties isn't the best pitch, but the one that runs up and away uh, kind of plays like a running up, up shot four seam. And I like to front hit the lefties if I, when I can get it over there. Um, but it's pretty standard uh, grip. But um, learning how to vary the movement on the pitch, side to side, up shot, sinking down to play off your other pitches has helped me a lot. I used to throw a split. I used to throw like a Vulcan split type change up my first year um, in the MLB, which I learned from Alex Cobb. But um, I've changed it over to a circle now. And I kind of, I kind of cross shoot it. So if this is the logo here, I kind of lay my hand 
like in an angle. So you can see it's just like neutral here. Then there you go. And I kind of lay my hands kind of sideways and I'm thinking middle finger. So I'm thinking middle finger here. So I throw my, I throw my change up hard. Um, and I'm trying to, young pitchers don't hear, they hear arm, they hear arm strength or they hear move your arm fast, wherever the case is. Hand velocity is what I'm looking for. I want my hand when I get here and I'm starting to rotate to go toward the plate. I want it to pick up hand velocity. And by the time I throw this pitch, when I throw it right, it's coming out of my hand, it's coming off my fingers like this on the slow motion. So let it coming off my hands. Well, mm, let me see. Kind of in like this way. It's coming off like this and it is, it is spinning. I mean, it is spinning hundred percent sideways and it's just, I've called it the UFO. I'll kind of like think in my mind, I want this ball to spin like a UFO, like a Tasmanian devil, where it's just creating more and more spin. It is, it is just falling down. And um, so it's a pretty, it's a pretty, you know, it's a circle changeup, kind of offset circle changeup. Um, I don't put a lot of pressure on my thumb. People say, put pressure on your thumb and on your ring finger. I have this ball in the palm and like the, like in like this part of my hand, I don't really know the, you know, the palm of my hand. I lay it flat. I grip it right around that top part of, of the coming down horseshoe here. And I rip over this, I rip over this seam. It's like, you know, it's like very here, 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 you're getting here. And when I'm out here, I'm like, boom, like you try to turn that, turn that thing over at the end. And um, the change has turned into my best pitch. It's my best pitch on track, man, and it gets it gets the worst swings. So, I mean, from what I've seen on video with, with Devin Williams, he kind of has a, a change up kind of like grip like this. And when he's coming through, he's literally turning this hand like a doorknob, like he's turning it over when he throws it. I can't, I've tried, believe me. I When I saw that start throwing that change up last year, next day of catch, I was out there like I was turning these things over, but um. It, did, it didn't work out for me, but this one, this one works pretty, pretty well. And I throw it hard, um, which I think is, um, I think is good. If I'm going right, my fastball should be three to seven. And I should be throwing a lot of fives if I'm, if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling right, um, which is where I was kind of at the play in the, you know, toward the end of the season into the postseason. And my changeup should be anywhere from 86 to 88, max 89. That's just my velocities. I used to throw it harder, but with the grip and kind of the way I set it in my hand now, and I'm really, when I, when I'm turning this over here um, on that middle finger, like you can see it kind of rubbing off that seam and creating that, that's that sideways, that's that sideways effect. Um, it's kind of in that range. So it still is slow enough, but sometimes I'll be in a game where I'm not feeling great and my fastball will be one to three, and I'm still throwing 88, 89 on our changeups. So at that point, it's deception from arm speed with, with the late movement. Because you can get yeah. deception from arm speed as much as you can get deception from pitch um, velocity change. Because if you're throwing, you know, a changeup that you don't have your arm moving the same, or your hand is different, or they can see a tell, it don't matter if it's 50 mile an hour slaughter, guys are going to adjust to it um, versus five miles an hour. Um, which is plenty, trust me, with, with good movement and good arm action. Um, maybe this is because I, this is how I throw it, but I really like the movement. Um, like I said, the good thing with, I mean, I'm, I'm looking for five miles an hour minimum, and sometimes it's greater. Sometimes I'll throw a 95, 96, and I'll back it up with a 86, 87. So I'm in the eight to nine range, which is great for me. I know a lot of people say you want 10, 10 or more. If you can get 10 or more, if you can throw yours like Gilito throws his, and you can go top shelf four seam with the middle of the zone four seam change up that 15 mile an hour difference, please do. I mean, that's if you that's great. If you can Johan Santana it, go on, go go do your thing. I I cannot. I've I'm working on something that I think I may get there, but it's not there yet. Um, but for me seven to eight miles, six to seven, eight miles an hour, especially with the movement is plenty. I was, um, you know, those first couple games back, I felt like I was missing something. Um, I started getting 
better better takes and better swings on pitches that I thought were good. And I really just felt like I was getting zoned in. And I felt like guys were just kind of locking into that middle to down part of the zone. And they were letting it go a lot of times if it was low, because I was throwing sinkers um, down for strikes with no reaction. But, you know, the, the change-ups and curveballs were getting a lot of takes. So I was like, man, I feel like I'm missing something here. I need to, I need to find something to climb up in the zone. And my four seam, I just couldn't get it going fast enough. So I just texted Keiko and I'm like, bro, can you send me a video of your cutter? And my man sent me a video of it and I kind of implemented it in my own way. Um, and so I sit, I sit cross seam here. So here's the logo again. I sit straight across, um, kind of like follow this line to put my middle finger right here on the inside part, I lay my, my pointer finger right behind it. And it's kind of like an offset little over the ball like that. And I, I don't want to say I preset my hand in my glove because it's not what it is, but I'm definitely not neutral. And I'm not seeing like this in my glove. I'm definitely a little bit more turned in. Cause I told you I had that problem getting my hand open. So I kind of combat that. I just kind of put my hand in my glove like in this shape. And then it gets back to neutral when I throw it. So early when I started throwing it, it was like, it was around 10 hop with about zero or one, um, you know, on the right side, which is technically like a cutter, but really I wanted to be on that left side of the map. I wanted to be on the, you know, I wanted to be over toward the lefties throw, you know, their four seams and their sinkers. So what I found was, is when I take this finger here, and I get more separation from my middle finger, it cuts like five inches more. So before I was just laying it on top like this. So, my, so it was about right here, which is not that far away from the thumb. When I started digging this into my glove and tucking that, now you can see how far it is away. It's probably not even there anymore. I was getting so much middle finger action off the end of this ball so late that it started like, literally like coming back like some of those ones that I was throwing toward the end there and in like in the raise game and, and things of that nature I mean they were coming back I was getting three to five um six inches of um you know of of, of movement on that left side of the of, of the map and when you play it with my two seam because they're both about 10 inches a hop I mean I was getting 25 to 30 inches of separation um from the two to the to the cut and then obviously my changeup um, plays down over there with you know 18 to 19 inches of of run. So it would ju it just it just made sense. And then the curveball on that back half of the plate, on the back door side of the plate, started playing up again. And I started getting swings and misses. I started getting takes. I started feeling like I should feel with with my pitch on that side of the plate. I threw really in a game with Rex Grossman with the A's. I punched them out on it. And I don't know what I don't know what count it was. One two two two, and. Um, I back, I, I kind of back shot him on the top part of the outside zone and he kind of stunned him a little bit. He thought it was off the plate. It wasn't, it was, it was a good pitch. Um, but that was the one that was more, a little bit of cut. It was like this much cut. It's like a little bit of cut and it was more like a four seam. And I think he was just kind of bugged out by it. Um, by the end of the game, the guys in the dugout were starting to tell dudes I was throwing cutters cause I could, you know, you can hear them and, um, you know, things of that nature. So, um, but when I started getting that separation, it really started, you know, just, just cutting across where I could start challenging guys in zone with it. So in the, in the one playoff game against the Rays where I had like 11, uh, 11 punchies, I didn't walk anybody because, oh, oh, one, oh, I was just throwing cutters on the outside half and letting them just cut across the zone. I was getting weird takes. I was getting foul balls, swings and misses. So it's going to be fun with that pitch for me. After the, you know, toward the end of the season and my Seattle start and then into the postseason was, was big. And um, just to show you how much it, it makes a difference, you know, my first start against Oakland in the playoffs, I didn't throw any. I didn't throw all one. And um, I was getting touched up a little bit because I was, they were kind of zoning me in to what I talked about before. And then the Rays game, um, just four days later, um, I, I threw like 15, 16 of them. And you really can see how much the, the eye level and the mixing with the curveball off it, um, how much it how much it changes um, your outcome.
the thing with my curveball that I have the ability to do with it is I can throw it to all part of the zone and I can vary velos on it and, and change kind of the angle and the, and, and the way the ball's coming out without changing my arm action, which is with my hand pressure. So, you know, I, like I said, I was telling you guys, I found this pitch because Jeff Getz was my pitch coach in high school and he threw a spike curveball like this. So I didn't throw any off speed. I threw a fastball when I was in high school. Like my junior year, I think in high school, he was like, start, start, you probably start throwing a curveball. And so he threw his just with the traditional spike. A lot of guys throw it like this still. Some guys put their nail on this side of the seam. Some guys put their nail on this side of the seam. Some guys flick it. I think Liam Hendricks flicks this like and gets it to go straight down. I don't know how the hell he does that, but uh, more power to him. Um, so I throw it. I throw it with my middle finger, with my nail in the middle of the laces, and I pretty much break down the center of um, of the logo of the stamp. So a lot of my pitches happen on this stamp. <laughs> if you guys, that's a reoccurring theme here. But I basically put my nail right here, and I run my middle finger down this side of the ball. And it doesn't matter if your hands are bigger or smaller than mine, because all you have to do is make sure your hand stays on the inside part of this ball. So if, you're, if your middle finger is super long and you're way down here, just make sure it's still on the inside. If your hands aren't as big and it's still up here, just make sure that this part, so the inside part of your um, middle finger is on the inside of that seam. That's what's going to give you that rotation straight down. So I keep some space here. I keep some space like right here in my hand when I'm, when I'm tucking it, there's a little bit of space here. It's not all, I'm not, I'm not gripping it all down. A lot of guys throw um, curve balls and they have all points of contact. I got some space here to kind of keep it loose in the hands so of the ball can ball can get out and pop out. So my goal with this pitch and what makes you feel comfortable is seam, seam, seam. I have seam in all parts of, of, um, of my hand, which I feel like gives me good control of the pitch. A lot of times guys are throwing curveballs, sliders, whatever, and they don't have seam with their fingers. And that's going to give them inconsistent spin. It's going to give them inconsistent um, location. So this is the biggest thing for me. And the, the next biggest thing is pressure on this finger. So if I want to throw a curveball 86, 87, I want to be in the dirt. I'm going to push so hard with this finger into this ball. Cause I do, when I'm throwing this ball, when my arm comes down, I get to that window I was talking about and I'm trying to generate that hand speed. I don't want this ball popping out early cause that's going to be an in the zone pitch. That's going to be a backup type curveball. So that is what allows me to go into the dirt, zero spot, back foot, whatever you, you want to call it. When I get two strikes or I think a guy's a, a one, one chase or aggressive, I want to throw the ball in the dirt. I'm putting pressure down this middle finger. So when this ball is coming out of my hand, now I'm, I'm kind of short arming it here. Make sure you get your arm up. People at home who are throwing, make sure you kind of arm up here, but I'm going to short arm it here so you guys can see better. When I get here, my I got pressure on this finger. This ball is going to be coming out off this middle finger, and it's going to be it's going to be hanging on there for quite some time. So when this comes out of my hand, it should be almost like on a straight line. So the so when you see a fastball out of your hand coming straight this way and you see this curveball coming out of my hand coming straight this way, there shouldn't be a lot of a visual difference here. And that's the biggest thing. You guys have to make this curveball, and it is a curveball. It's not a slider. It's a curveball. You have to make that thing pop out of your hand even with a fastball because you're going to want to, you're, you're going to want guys to think middle of the zone heater, bottom of the bottom rail heater, on the outside half, whatever your case may be, and it's going to break off and it's going to slide away. So pressure on the finger here is going to allow that ball to stay connected to this middle finger. If I don't have pressure here, that ball is going to pop off your middle finger and it's going to, it's going to hang, which still happens to me. I go with Palmer's on the curveball, go check out Mike Zanino in the playoffs. But that's, that's the big cue for me. When I have pressure on this finger, it's going to give me the best chance to not make a mistake with this pitch, get the ball in the dirt. So then when I want to throw it in the zone, it's less pressure. It's just not as much. So all the way down, you can see my hand here. You can see it's tight against the side of this ball. And when I throw this thing, it's coming straight out just like that, straight at you. 
Now, when you want to throw it for a strike or you want to backdoor it, just take pressure off your finger. Just same grip, not as much pressure here. You can see it's, it's, it's a little bit more, I'm um, a little bit more loose up here in this finger. And when this thing comes off, it's going to pop a little bit. So here's the release, less pressure. It's coming out and boom, it's coming up a teeny bit before it flattens out and it makes it way back down. So that's easy for in the zone strikes. Um, if, if I want to throw it a more of like a slider to a righty, I offset the grip. So I'll get it in my glove. Here's the logo again. I'll put my finger on this side of the logo and I'll turn the ball and I'll put my middle finger kind of offset on the inside part. So when now that's coming out of my hand, this is the spin we're looking at here. It's coming out this way, which is going to be more of like a this effect versus the curveball grip straight over the top is coming out, boom, this way. So it's not a perfect 12-6 because it's not. I'm more of a one to seven when I'm going right. Um, that's why, you know, if you're sitting there and you're saying that ball's not spinning perfectly, it's not. It's coming out like this. But the point of this ball is to spin so tight on this axis that the hitter is not going to be able to see it. So um, that's it, man. When, but I'm able to throw, you know, if I want to go more backdoor, I'll hold it more on this side of the logo. So I'll hold it more here. I'll put the pressure on there. I'll take a little bit of pressure off my this finger. So when I throw this, boom, it's coming out more 12-6. So I'm able to kind of 12, six, one, seven, and two, eight it all with the same grip and able to throw a batter back to back curveballs with the same spin, same arm action, same arm speed, but throw them a two, uh, a, a two, one pitch in the zone to have a little bit less pressure here, boop in the zone. So it's a take on two, one, or maybe they're thinking a fastball's coming. So they roll it over, foul it off and next pitch. Same exact grip, ton of pressure on this finger, boop, coming out straight at them. They're thinking heater, or, or they see the spin. They're saying, I just missed that pitch. I'm going for it again. And then, you know, kind of ends up in the dirt and you get your swing and miss. So people would be like, oh my God, you know, he throws 40% breaking balls. But, you know, other guys have a have a graph and it's like four seam, two seam, cutter, slider, curveball. You know, so they have all these different categories that build up their, you know, their repertoire. And people don't really make a big deal out of it because they're throwing their curveball 25% of the time. They're throwing their slider 15%. There's no difference in what I'm doing. I just call it a knuckle curve. But I'm varying the looks and I'm varying the speeds and the angles that this ball is coming out at. It doesn't always go perfect. You know, I, I get beat on this pitch too sometimes. But I'm varying it enough to where that 40% isn't as much of what it seems. If you go to the Yankees game, because everyone's going to know the 24 straight curveballs, that, I mean, I was throwing five different types of breaking balls, um, breaking pitches. You know, I've got one that's going straight up, straight down, one that's going back foot, one that's coming up and around, one that's going up, down in the zone, on the outside half to righties. So there's just a lot that I've learned to be able to do with that pitch because I had to survive with it. Now, if you were never where I was in my career in the minor leagues or whatever, where you can't throw a strike with fastball and you know, all that stuff, you don't learn how to survive with pitches, but um, I had to learn how to survive with it.